it kind of hard. So if I stutter, good luck to me. So, okay, we were talking about Belshazzar the other night. And, well, tonight, too, I have to start off with a sad sentence. It says like this. When the Persians killed Belshazzar. A sorry guy got a dead guy in it. Mm-hmm. When the Persians killed Belshazzar and began to rule Babylon, well, God's people, you know, the captives from Judah, well, ha had been made, had been there for many years. How long? A lot, just many. Those who had been young, well, they were now, they were brought to Babylon, such as, you know, Daniel. Well, they were now quite old, so, you know, good luck to them. Some of the people had died while they were in Babylon. And, and, you know, many of their babies were born who had never lived in Judah at all. Wow. They don't even know it. Mm -mm. But the older people, they remembered their homeland and their wonderful city, Jerusalem. And they told the kids all about it. Kind of like Once Upon a Time stories. Mm -hmm. This made the children want to go there someday. Yeah, you told me about Disney World and I wanted to go and then I got to go and now I know all about it. You want to live there? No, not really. So Cyrus, he was the mighty king of the Persians. And when he became ruler of Babylon, God put in his heart to make a new law. Uh-oh, the one last night wasn't so good. You know, the don't pray to God law? That, that backfired. In, in the new law of Cyrus, it said, God has given me all the kingdoms that, that I rule. Now he wants me to build him a house of worship in Jerusalem. All the captives, you know, from Judah, that may, may, may now go back to their home in Jerusalem. Freedom! Oh, but he got to build this house. Still? Freedom! Those those who stayed in, in Babylon, well, they must give money or silver or gold or maybe some food to help those who make the long journey. Yeah. It's called supporting the cause. Okay. When the Jews heard of the, and, and they read the new law, they were excited and glad. For once it was in their favor. You know what I mean? For once. At last, they were going home to build a temple of worship to the God they served. Wait a minute. They've already done this once, twice. Mm -hmm. So i got to say to you, do you remember that the prophet Jeremiah, he had written letters to Babylon when the Jews first came there and told them that they would get to return to Jerusalem in 70 years. Uh-oh, I got my answer now. It's been 70 years. Well, when Cyrus, he made his little law that promised, that promised there, it came true. For 70 years had passed. Whoa. Somebody should have been counting. They were. Many of the Jews, they began to get ready for the long journey ahead. You know, pack everything up and, and get rid of the odds and ends you really don't need. You know, downsize. Those who were too old or maybe too young to, to make the journey trip and those who wanted to stay in Babylon, they helped those who were going, you know, teamwork. And, and they brought gifts of gold and silver to, to use in building the new temple. They, they prepared food for the trip, you know, like Happy Meals. No. Picnics? No. Basics? Yeah. Bread, water, fruit. And they gave some, and they gave some animals for the people to ride on to. Here, take my donkey. I won't need him too much. And stuff like that. And even Cyrus, the king, he gave something. Oh, I love this part. He gave all the golden dishes from the temple of God that Nebuchadnezzar had stolen. Remember? Yeah, remember that? dirty. They're not dirty. They've been washed. Yeah. I hope so. Sparkly! And, and now with all this treasure, the Jews set out on their journey. 
What a happy little group they were. Oh my goodness, they probably were singing songs. Yeah. And besides the river, right beside the river, they walked and rode singing as they went. Yeah. Do you know the song they were singing? No. Me neither. A travel song. Over the river and through the woods to grandmother's house we go. No. I thought it was a good song. It talks about traveling. No. Well, at night, you know, they made their camp and they slept in their little tents. And finally they crossed the mountains and, and made their way down to their homeland. The land of Judah. But, here comes. They were met with unhappy sight. Uh-oh. The beautiful city of Jerusalem had been burned by Nebuchadnezzar. And it was in ruins. You know, disaster. The walls around it were crumbling and broken down. It's called disintegrating. Look it up. And the temple of God, you know the one that Solomon had built, was nothing but ashes. Oh yeah, we're building it back. Temple number three now. And the first thing the people did was clear away enough of the rubbish to find where the altar had stood. Here, they built a new altar with stones, of course, and offered sacrifices to God. Man, they get right to business, don't they? They know what to put first. And then the priests continued to make these offerings, you know, like every morning and evening. And while the people began building homes for for themselves. Yeah. I guess they could use the foundations for the other ones. That might speed up the process. You know, recycle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Reclaim. That's the word. Reclaim the land. Okay. Keep going. After the people, you know, they had found their land and built homes, then they began building a new temple. Okay. So to the men, the men whom Cyrus had named to rule Judea, Judah, well, what was a prince? A prince from King David's family named, uh oh, here it comes, Zerubbabel. What? Zerubbabel. It's hard to say. It sounds like rub a dub dub. <laughs> okay. Anyway, he himself, Zerubbabel, he, he led in the building of the new temple. He had priests who served in the temple and the worship. And, and carpenters? Wait a minute, I know a carpenter. Mm-hmm. He's named Joseph. Mm-hmm. He was Jesus' daddy on earth. Mm-hmm. They had carpenters and bricklayers to help them. And when the when the first stones of the of the buildings were laid, there was a great celebration and music and singing. They are partying now. But some of the old people who were there, you know, they could remember the old temple as Solomon had built it. <gasps> they, won't need, they won't need blueprints. Yes, they will. These people, they cried just a little because they knew that the new temple would never be that beautiful. They could try. Yeah. Mm, nah. Now, in the country of Samaria, right you know, above Jerusalem, their next door neighbors, there lived some of the Israelites whose fathers had been in the, the ten tribes that the Assyrians captured. Yeah, I know about them. And those Samaria, Samaritan peoples, they were jealous of the Jews because God was still with them. They tried to worry the Jews and keep them from building the temple. And that they were, um, they were just bothering them, mm -hmm. distracting them. Mm -hmm. When King Cyrus died, they wrote a letter to the new king and said, "The captives who've come back to Judah, Judah, that well, they are trying to build the town of Jerusalem again. And once they get it built, just so you know, they are going to turn against you and quit serving you." They're just spreading bad news. Mm -hmm. When the king, he read his letter, he sent an answer back to the, to the Samaritans. And he says to them, I command that the building of the city of Jerusalem stop. 
Oh no, he believed it. Yeah, somebody needs to tell him, don't believe everything that you read. Especially if it's on the internet, okay? Just saying, you know. The Samaritans, well they hurried with his letter to Jerusalem and made the Jews stop working. And the temple stood bare and unfinished during the time that this king ruled. Wow. Wonder where they focused their attention. Back on the houses. I guess. Then the new king, he began to reign. Because, you know, one dies and one starts and one dies and one starts. It seems to be a vicious cycle in the Bible. Anyway, God sent two prophets, Haggai and Zechariah. Yeah. Here we go, prophets. To call the people back to work. You know him. And his helpers, they began building harder than ever. And when the enemies of the Jews told the new king about this, he looked back in the records to see what he could find out about the case. Uh-oh, they're writing it down like I've been saying. And when he, he found that the, the, the Cyrus had given the Jews the command to build the temple, he told the enemies to help the Jews build instead of fighting them. Ha! Huh. History. Good history lesson. So, I'm almost at the end, kids. So, after about 20 years, that's a long time, the new temple, well, it finally, finally, finally was finished. It was a little larger than the one Solomon had built. It was bigger. But it was not as beautiful or as richly decorated. You know, how can you top that? And even so, the people, they were glad to have a new house of worship and were thankful to God for bringing them home to build it. Wow. Just says, you know, be thankful for what you've got. Worship in a tent, live in a tent, whatever. Just be thankful. What are you thankful for? Um, I'm thankful we have this house. Nobody ever gets to see it but me. And, um, I'm thankful for my church. And it's getting ready to open up again. Yeah, yeah, I can go. No, you're not. I am. You're not. Okay, I'm going to keep watching it online, I think. Okay, that's cool.